Hi. I am Mali, and welcome to the channel. Today's tutorial focuses on how you can take a reference image and apply the clothing style to the source. Grounded Dino and Segment Anything models are used to automate the masking process. You can take a step further and enhance the output of the source with iterative upscaling. All this is done in a single workflow. Let me show you how, some hacks and its limitations in Comfy UI. The workflow JSON will be available for channel paid members via community post. Thank you for your continued support. This is not a basic tutorial, and if you are new to Comfy, I suggest you check out other tutorial videos on the channel page. Go to the Comfy Manager, install custom nodes. The Impact and Inspire pack is used for masking and upscaling. The ControlNet Auxiliary preprocessors and the WAS node suit are required as well. Install Python GOS and the Comfy UI IP adapter plus nodes. And lastly, install Segment Anything. After installation, restart Comfy UI from the command prompt and browser. You need custom models for IP adapter and clip vision. Go back to the Comfy Manager, install models. Here, search for ClipVision and install the SD 1.5 ClipVision model. Then, search for IP adapter and install the Plus model for Stable Diffusion 1.5. To start, add a load image and a constraint image node. Keep the max width and height as 1024. This node will resize the image to that resolution and will maintain the ratio at the same time. This is the best and easiest method for SD 1.5 or SDXL image processing without any math nodes. We need to segment the subject's clothing. Add the grounding Dino SAM segment node. Drag and add the SAM model loader from segment anything. There are multiple models to choose from. For the tutorial, select the High Quality Vision Transformer Huge model. As per my testing, this works the best. The selected model is automatically downloaded when you hit Q prompt for the first time. Similarly, add the Grounding Dino model loader. And the 694 MB Swin Transformer variant will do. Connect the image. Here, a one-word prompt like dress or clothes would do. If you need to select multiple segments, you can separate them by a comma. Keep a threshold of 0.5 or higher. If, in an image, you want multiple segments, reduce the threshold. The value represents the percentage of pixels occupied by the subject, in reference to the total pixels of the image. Select a source image, add a preview node, and Q prompt. To see the preview of the mask, search and add mask to image node and connect it. You can actually control the size of the mask via the grow mask node. This comes in very handy and a single digit increase or decrease can give desirable results. Later in the tutorial, I will explain how to manipulate this value with a live example. For now, I will keep the value at 6. For the reference image, I recommend removing the background. Add the RemBG node from was suit. Having only the subject helps with the nuances of masking the clothes, face, and hair. The idea here is to create a mask for the reference image and use that to impose the style over the sample image via the case sampler. I am going to duplicate the grounding Dino node twice and connect them. We need to separate the clothes from the face and hair. I do this because sometimes the hair may overlap the clothes. Since the subject is isolated, a lower threshold of 0.2 should suffice for the face and the hair. 
duplicate the mask to image nodes twice. I will connect the main unconstrained image and hit Q prompt. It did not mask the face correctly. For the face and hair, it's advisable to have a grow mask node in between. This way, you can have a little buffer when subtracting the face and hair from clothes. And the reason why it is still not masking correctly is because without removing the background, the threshold is too high. You can go with a very low threshold, but I prefer removing the background to avoid accidental segmenting. To subtract the mask, right-click and add mask minus mask node from the impact pack. This node does not come up in search. Dress connects to mask 1, face and hair to mask 2. The node subtracts mask 2 from mask 1. For the style transfer, IP adapter works best. Select the IP adapter plus SD 1.5 model. Do the same for the clip vision. The reference dress from the grounding Dino output will connect with the IP adapter image input. For higher accuracy, connect the subtracted mask to the attention mask input as well. Add the load checkpoint and VAE nodes. It is essential you choose a model trained for in painting. The Realistic Vision 5.1 in painting model performs the best here. I will leave the link to the model in the description. Add a VAE and code for in painting. This node takes the pixel image and encodes it for latent space. Add an advanced case sampler and connect it with the VAE encode and IP adapter. Add clip text encode nodes for positive and negative conditioning. Finish all the relevant connections with the case sampler. The final mask output from the source image will connect with the VAE encode. Let's do some case sampler settings and hit Q prompt. The output won't always be perfect. There are many ways to correct this. I will go step by step. The first thing to do is add positive and negative conditioning. This will reduce the number of undesired generations. The original dress mask is way wider than the source image. Sometimes, increasing the mask size helps. These distortions are because of the IP adapter input. Whenever using IP adapter, always make it a standard to use prep image for clip vision. Reconnect the image output and add a preview. I prefer padding for the crop position and try a sharpening value at 0.5. Additional clothing specific conditioning is typically not required. However, let's say I put in a silver copper, red dress, in the positive. It blends in the style better. However, you can avoid specific prompting altogether. Let's try another sample image without specific prompting. Some undesired results are seed specific. Before trying in painting or conditioning, try changing the seed to see if the problem is fixed or not. Much better. I want to show you an example that requires manual fixing. There are certain limitations to the workflow. I will give you bad examples at the end and explain them in detail. Let's assume that an output has artifacts and cannot be corrected via seed, masking, or conditioning. 
To fix this, manual and painting is required. Copy the four nodes, which include the VAE encode, decode, sampler, and preview. Change the grow mask value to default, which is 6. Randomize the seed for the second case sampler. There is a node in the impact pact called preview bridge. This node allows you to create a mask and pass on the image and mask as separate outputs. Right-click and open in Mask Editor. Draw a rough mask to cover a little more than the damaged area. Connect all the inputs and outputs. For the model, make sure you connect the load checkpoint directly and not through the IP adapter. You would want the output to be generated in batches, as it is convenient to choose from a range of fixes for the in-painting. Add and connect a repeat latent batch node. Let's generate in a batch of 8. These are fixed but not refined. You can now do an upscale and add some details to the image. Let's say you like the seventh output. Search and add a node called Image Batch Splitter from the Inspire pack. Increase the split count to the number of your batch generation. Now add two control net models, one line art and the other depth. We require control net here to ensure that even with a slightly higher denoising value, the new upscaled generation resembles the source. Reduce the strength of line art to 0.4 and depth map to 0.5. Also, make sure the selected resolution for the preprocessor is 1024. Connect the image 7 output from the splitter to the control net preprocessor inputs. Add a checkpoint and VAE loader. We have to select a non-in-painting checkpoint. I would be using the realistic vision version 6 beta. Add the positive and negative conditioning and connect to the control net. For adding details and upscaling, I will use the iterative upscale node. This upscaling process involves repeatedly applying an upscaling algorithm to the image. Each iteration increases the size of the image, enhancing details and sharpness. An upscale factor of 1.5 means it will upscale the image 1.5 times the source. Three steps means it will split the upscale into three batches. The first would scale it to 1.17x, the second to 1.33x, and the final step would be 1.5x. If you want 2x upscale, then increase the steps to 4. It would then upscale by 0.25x at each step. Drag out the upscaler input and connect it with the Pixel K Sampler upscale provider. For the upscale method, use Lanxos. Pick a random seed. I would increase the steps here around the 30 to 50 range. Use the same scheduler and sampler as before. The denoise value depends on how much you want the details to change. For my sample, I would choose 0.35. Connect control net, checkpoint and VAE. Choose a preferred upscale model. Here, you can attach two hooks. One is for the denoising and one for the guidance. If you want to attach both, choose Hook Combine. The guidance is useful when there are many iterative upscale steps. When you increase the steps, the image will likely lose some colors and saturation. At this point, you can put a CFG hook with a value of 10 or 12. For the tutorial, I am only going to choose the denoising hook. A value of 0.5 would mean that with each step it will increase the denoise value. At the last step, the denoising would be 0.5. This really works very well and gives a better coherent output. 
Connect the image and the VAE input in the upscale node, put in conditioning, and hit the Q prompt. You can see the face has changed and improved, along with other details. If you want a specific face here, I suggest you use a trained LoRa. Also, you can see the original image was at night, and this one has daylight. Let's add the work night to the positive conditioning. Way way better. Okay, so this is the final workflow. Let's review it quickly. Disable the upscale and in painting nodes. Select a source and reference image. And Q prompt. Check the image output. If satisfactory, you are done. This image has a slight blending overlay of the original dress. This would be corrected via upscaling. Also, I would like to remove the light source behind the head. Draw a mask and save to node. Enable the second sampler nodes and Q prompt. Make a selection. Then enable the upscaling nodes and proceed with Q prompt. Add any additional conditioning, if required. And that's about it. The workflow is quite robust. However, there are some limitations to it. The first and only rule is that if your source image has a full body and the reference does not, the AI won't know what to do without additional conditioning or in painting. All the samples showcased here are at the default setting without any clothing-specific prompting. The source and the reference image can be different, but there is a limit. These are absolutely extreme poses if compared to each other. In the process of applying the style, it messes up the hands and the legs. However, changing the reference image with full legs does a much better job. Due to the pose, this would be hard to fix via in-painting. Maybe a random seed would work here, but I wanted to show you non-cherry-picked images. Again, maybe a full-length reference could work, but there are a lot of errors in the output. For some weird reason, this worked on the first try, where I expected it not to. The output is reasonably fixable via the workflow. Even though the reference has no legs, this one worked. I guess it's because of the angle and pose. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and learned something new in Comfy. Until next time.